Seek the Holy Ghost like you seek approval. If you would seek the Holy Ghost like you seek money or whatever it is, you'd have the power that you need for the problem you face. And ye shall be witnesses. Do you realize what he's saying here? It's not that you have a life of ease and comfort. The focus of your life is to be a witness to the power of God. When I read that, I realize how woefully short I've fallen God in a lot of my endeavors. A lot of the things that I spend time on. I know I got to work. I know I got to do this. I know I have to do that. I know I got to keep the house. I know. But I wasn't, I wasn't given the Holy Ghost for goosebumps. The Holy Ghost is to be a witness. The Holy Ghost, in other words, is a way that God deals with me so that I'm not the old me anymore. And notice he says, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Where, where were they? Here in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And the uttermost part of the earth. In Acts chapter 2, which is the celebration that we celebrate today, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now this is where the title is going to meet the message. Are you ready? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, listen, yeah. We're all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, it's a spiritual gift. It's not what you do. It's what the Holy Ghost does. I said this before. The most unruly member in the body is our. So God wants us to yield the most unruly member. How many times you find yourself flying off the handle and a bunch of stuff comes out of your mouth? Man, I wish I hadn't said that. Anybody ever had to eat your words? <laughs> Come on, fellas. You made that comment about that dried chicken and now you can't even. You, you, you love some chicken right now because MPBJs are getting on your nerves. Nuking that pot pie and going in there and make oh yeah. Ah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. So there's some intelligent people here. Now, when this was noised abroad, it spread. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. God gives them a spiritual tongue. But it wasn't gibberish. It was recognizable to those that were brought up in that country or origin of whatever that tongue God gave them. Now listen at verse 7. And are you following along in your textbook? And it's not in us. This is not in us. This is a they. This is the people that aren't speaking in tongues. This is the people that have gathered because they were speaking. There's the first two days are about the church, and then there's people. Hey, wait a minute. So the days is plural. plural. There's two kind of days there. Let's not get caught up in the days and the that. But just let me get with you. And they, those not speaking in tongues, were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. They didn't have Rosetta Stone. They didn't have, you know, 10 easy steps to speak in Spanish. They, they, God gave them a spiritual unction to speak in an unknown tongue that they didn't know. I remember Bible college and going out to the Bible college story. There was some missionaries from Korea. And there was a lady who got the Holy Ghost and she starts speaking in tongues. And she's just a regular person like you and I here in America. And she starts speaking in an unknown tongue. And the Korean lady went, oh, my God, she's speaking Korean. And she translated everything she had been saying. And all it was was hallelujah, glory to God. And it was accolades and everything for God. And that lady, when she got done speaking in tongues, I, I don't know Korean. I've never spoken Korean in my life. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts is the only connecting link between the Gospels and the Epistles. Who knows what an Epistle is? Oh, better yet, who doesn't know? 
Okay, the epistles are the New Testament books written by Paul and a couple of others. The epistles aren't the apostles' wives. Put it that way. Are you hearing me? Matthew 28 and 6 ends with Christ's resurrection. Mark 16 and 19 ends with Christ's ascension. Luke 24 49 ends with the promise of the Holy Ghost. And John 21 22 ends with the promise of Christ's second coming. So Acts 1 through 11, which I just read to you, links all four of the gospel things to the New Testament church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anybody learning anything today? So the day of Pentecost, Pentecost means 50th, thank you. Held 50 days after the feast of the first fruits or the Passover. Remember the deliverance from Egypt? The blood of the lamb on the doorpost and they had to be in the house. Okay, same celebration as this today. That we, the, the blood of Jesus is applied to, applied to life and we're in the house. No, we don't have to worry about our sins are covered by the blood. Isn't it funny that that you don't have to be in a house? Can you imagine some, and I'll say some fool deciding, I don't believe all that stuff. And they took the they took the hiss up and, and marked the doorpost back when the death angel was going to come over you. Can you imagine some just strolling down the street disregarding it? They died. Because they simply didn't obey. Can I tell you something? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You need to be in the church. He's coming for the church. Are you here? Now, I get the church is not the building, it's the people. But the Bible also says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Look, those that build the ark were saved by it. Those building the church will be saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. So the Passover, we know Jesus died as the Lamb of God. John 1, 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Pentecost is the formation in Acts chapter 2, verse, verses 1 through 7, is the formation of the church comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. And every one of us ought to be thankful. I'm so thankful that we got grafted in. If you were here Wednesday night, you'll understand the word graft. Grafting in like the lamb. Are you hearing me? Ephesians chapter 2, Paul makes some beautiful words here. He says in chapter 2, 13, 16, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. Thank God for the blood. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh, when he ran and blood was shed, the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. It was at Pentecost that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, the tabernacle plan, the laws. Remember, he put it on tables of the Jews referred to this day as the birthday of Judaism after they arrived in the promised land. Pentecost also marked the wheat harvest. It was a time of rejoicing. It was a time of celebration. It was Pentecost that the Lord had in mind when he gave the message to Pharaoh, what did, he, what, did, what, what, what did Moses say to Pharaoh? What's that one phrase that sticks out? Exodus 5, 1, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. We can still have church in the world. It's at Pentecost that the nation of Israel was established as the church in the wilderness. Acts 7 and 38, it's right there in the New Testament to give us an understanding that we can correlate and reconcile Old and New Testament together. They are not a contradiction, they are God's plan. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Jesus was there with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Old Testament church was formed at Pentecost. And so was the New Testament church. Yeah. Matthew 16 and 18, when Jesus is speaking, he said also unto thee that thou art Peter. 
and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, all the stuff that I read to you in Acts, I know we're going through a lot and I told you it's going to be scripture heavy, but I don't want us just to run around with some sort of emotionalism, sensationalism, and not have the real thing and understanding what Christianity really is. Everybody say, I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, who did Jesus just say he's going to build his church upon? Peter. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Stay with me now. So Pentecost in the Old Testament was the giving of the law by Moses. Pentecost in the New Testament is the law written on the heart. Everybody say, I need the Holy Ghost. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Do you see it? Did you see that? Can you see the parable that's being made on purpose? God's word is now to be in your heart, not just on tables of stone. Isn't that beautiful? What does it mean to be apostolic Pentecostal? Well, from a theological standpoint, I'm not sure. It means that we believe in the restoration of the original apostolic church after the children of if we're going to be the church, we have to be the book of Acts. We still want to preach the book of Acts. We still want to believe the book of Acts. We still want to live the book of Acts. And I know today that's foreign. If you walk into most churches today, it sounds and looks nothing like the book of Acts. Let me tell you what we want to do. We want to look like the book of Acts. We want to live like the book of Acts. We want it like they had it. Are you hearing me? We believe that the church as is presented in the book of Acts is what the church is supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way. I don't believe culture dictates. I don't believe the politicians dictate. In fact, when you read the book of Acts, you're going to realize there's a struggle between politics and the church. Boy, I may, I may get into trouble here. We believe that the church that Jesus established when he said, upon this rock, I will build, build my church, is the church he intended us to be. And our forefathers, church forefathers, began to diligently seek the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In fact, when I get to you later, when you go to Acts 19, he asked disciples, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? When's the last time you asked a Christian that, that question? When's the last time? And if you've asked it, when's the last time you got a good response? You're judging me. Oh, I'm really not. I'm just asking if you're doing it like the Bible. Isn't it funny how the Bible can't have a say about what the church is supposed to be today? Oh, Brother Charles, can you just make this off the street? You're going to get us trouble on you. They're going to come and lock you up. Come on. What do you want me to do? Lie to you today? A church patterned after the book of Acts needs people living like they did in the book of Acts. So what does it mean to be apostolic? Really apostolic, not just apostolic in a good view. It means that we believe that the church is supposed to have supernatural power. Now, I can tell you right now, so frankly, that someone came to me in the middle of a church and said, Boy, can I hold my seat in place? You know, you need to push these doctors. I go to church. I like it. I got this. I got a Bible. I'm thankful someone let me hold my seat in my church. In my church. Let me say this again. You don't make yourself a Christian. The Holy Ghost does. And you're not a Christian without the Holy Ghost. It's Bible. That offends us. Who are you to say? I'm not saying you're not. 
like lot like Philip said to the Ethiopian, understand with what thou readest. How can I unless some man show me? How many were in Bible study Thursday night? Oh, how do you know that was covered? You weren't there. I got an inroad with the teacher. <laughs> Acts one and eight tells us. I want you. I want you to. I want you to self apply. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The next time you want to call a wayward child or a friend that's out of the will of God, when you ask the Holy Ghost, when are you going to let the Holy Ghost talk back to you? I had this thing with my children. Kids fight. That's natural. The fighting's not the problem. It's how you resolve that question. You know, my thing was, well, who's going to be the first Christian then? Then you get basically, it turns into the chipmunks. You first. No, you first. No, you first. You the last thing I need to do is go coddle the offending. Oh, you're okay. You need to get right. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. You're not Jesus. You, you can't console away their sin. you got to allow them to be corrected and get right with God. The Holy Ghost needs to lead and guide. You can say, follow me as I follow Christ, but you can't undermine Christ by saying, oh, it's okay. Don't do it three times, four times. No. The church has a heritage of Holy Ghost power. How many likes the stories in the Bible? How many likes the stories? They're like, anybody been delivered? I'm going to tell you right here and right now. If you got a problem with drugs, you can be delivered here. If you got cancer, if you got, I'm telling you right now, I know there's doubt. And I know there's struggle. I'm telling you right here, right now, in this church, there's a supernatural power that if you'll believe, God can heal, God can fill, and God can deliver. Now, some of you are going to continue with family problems, family show, because you'd rather console it than let God control it. The church has a history of seeing entire regions changed and transformed by the Holy Ghost. Homes turned upside down. Jobs being granted. Lives being saved. It still happens. Are you hearing me? The church has a history of seeing the Lord add to it daily. But the big thing is, is we got to be back to being witnesses. That's what he gave you the Holy Ghost for. Not for you to subdue and tell it you're going to go where I want to go and do what I want to do, but I must decrease that it increase so I can do what God's called me to do. Anybody want that kind of life? Anybody want that going on in their life? Anybody want to know that, hey, when Jesus comes, I'm already walking with him and talking with him. What we're seeing in the book of Acts is that at some point in history, truly, there were hungry men and women got tired of business as usual. I'll be the first one to say, I'm, I'm glad I live in America. For all the wrong. Our American See, 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 you have the disadvantage of a pastor. I've preached all over the country, and I've preached overseas. I've preached in places where people were taking baths in mud puddles. I've preached in places where I was barely fed, but I ate some food. I've seen it. And the biggest tragedy we have, when you look at all the men here, Go make good money, and God blesses you, and you got to have this kind of house and this kind of car, and we got all that kind of wonderful stuff, and we're glad. I'm glad for it. But really, how can we tell them to be a church? We'll console a child before we tell them to be a church. We'll, we'll, we'll go spend all day doing other things, and oh, it's okay to miss church. And yet I can show you videos and pictures of people that are walking miles in the rain just to walk in to a tiny little tent with a wooden post and, and, and some underfed, undernourished minister getting up there with a pair of shoes and a pair of pants and shirts that don't fit right, talking about the Holy Ghost, and they have a move of God, and we sit here with our suits and our ties, and oh, that's a nice story. We've been dealing with it for a year now, being told to be afraid. Isn't it funny? 
that our medical professionals say, don't be around anybody but them. Don't go to church, but go to the hospital. Don't go to church, but go to the, the outpatient. Isn't it funny? The Bible tells us we ought to obey God rather than men. Look at this statistic here. Because I, 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 I invested in a company years ago that got into this. 1.7 million Americans develop HAI. Anybody know what those are? Hospital acquired infections. One. 0.7 million. Oh, but don't come to church. 99,000. Three fourths of the effects can start in nursing homes, doctors' offices, and hospitals. Isn't it funny how today? The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves to get to death. We'll forsake that, but we'll go to the doctor's office. We'll go to the hospital. And we wonder why we're sick. We wonder our families are falling apart. We wonder why all this junk's going on. Oh, I got a ministry. Really? You can't get to church, but you can make it to the doctor? You can go to school, but you can't go to church. You can go to work, but you can't get to church. You can accept money, but you can't give it. Look, I'm not harping on, it. I'm harping on the spirit of the age. I love America. Lulling us to sleep. We're American, not apostolic. But these loved ones, they wouldn't allow their family. Nothing wrong when we listen to those folks. Holy Ghost. Well, Brother Crow, you don't know my medical condition. Down with me. Let's compare pain pain. I'll talk with you. But if you're mad at me, if you don't like what I'm preaching to Holy Ghost. When's the last time you prayed through and the Holy Ghost spoke in tongues and that he could speak to you? Hey, man, Brother Crow, you're getting off. No. Because there's a world out there that don't care about it. It don't care about your kids. They want them to conform. Politicians are making decisions for weird Someone's not listening to the Holy Ghost. We need to be the we have to at some point at some point oh. at some point you're not gonna stop me you're not gonna stop us from I hate the he was too religious they never get mad when they're beating their wives and abandoning their 15 kids or 15 years you know what what you see what's happening, folks, and I don't want to get on that. Because I know. I know you I know you have a great excuse. You. And it's not me not buying it. But you have to be concerned with. It's really Jesus you might. As if you're mad at me for saying something, but the Holy Ghost can't speak to you, your problem is bigger than me. Revelations 21 says, verse 5 8, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He still does this. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst, the fountain of the water of life freely. Hey, we got we got action, folks. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving. Wait a minute. Look what the fearful and unbelieving are, are, are grouped with. Don't you group me with all those idolaters. Don't you group me with the fornicators. Don't you? But that's exactly what the Lord does. And the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. What? You're going to put a liar 
with a whoremonger? Come on, man. It was 10 bucks that I didn't give on my tithe. Really? I don't give me some of this. To have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I mean, knows the devil a lot. The devil's a liar. He lies. Now that we got the negative stuff over with, anybody, anybody ready for a personal revival and an invitation to a harvest? Isn't that what Pentecost is for? How many remember when you got the Holy Ghost how fired up and how excited and you just couldn't do enough? You were getting all up under the pastor's foot and, and, and sitting in other people's seats and they're like, what are they doing up here? Well, who are they doing that? Can somebody say, let the church be the church again. Let's get back to the things that make us the church. Let's get back to being led of the Holy Ghost, reading the Bible on fire and powerful. Your baby falls sick. You've got power to lay hands on that sick and the recover. You're walking in the Holy Ghost and you can say right thing to that daughter or that son or that to say to God, hey, listen, you need to get back to church. That's how the restoration of the Pentecostal experience began to break out at the beginning of the 20th century. Men and women were sick and tired of the status quo. They wanted something real. They desired something real. Now, I get it. Some of you, you're done. You're done as an overcooked Thanksgiving turkey, and ain't no way we're going to fix you. We need just some people that still want to join our voices with their voices and let the church be the church. I believe it's high time we let that desperate world know that the church of the living God is alive and well. I'm on fire. I believe the Bible. I got the Holy Ghost evidence of speaking in tongues. I can tell you how to get saved. I can tell you how to stay saved. I can tell you how to live saved. And like Paul, we can say, follow me as I follow Christ because I'm in this thing. To win this thing. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me get to that point I, I tried to make earlier. And I know I know, I need to hurry up. Remember what Jesus instructed his disciples to do? It kind of goes counter. Like, Wait a minute. Is this a, are we circling back here? Because he said, tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Wait a minute. Because I know, like your special selves, you were handpicked just like they were. Come on. Go ahead, straighten that tie. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Not handpicked. Handpicked. Anybody know Jesus called? I'm talking like this, no one wants to do it, but you're walking around there. Let's get real. It's getting the, the nitty gritty and doing the stickiness of our nature. We're handpicked. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, right? I believe that for my wife. I believe for my children. I believe in you. I believe that. Don't get me wrong today. These guys were handpicked. Listen, they were personally taught and trained by Jesus. I think that'd be a pretty good. Anybody with me on this one? Am I? Pray. How to minister. How to live. How to love. The freak person. They, they saw the living God. They were trained and told to go, to do, to, they were empowered by Jesus. They, they were more than spectators to the glory and power of God. They saw people being fed from a handful of fish and some bread. They taught blind, seeing, deaf, 
these guys were right in the middle of it. Luke tells of a time when Jesus alone closest father was picked up two by two. Anyone remember that? First of that. Charge them to preach the good news of the coming of the kingdom. Heal the sick. Did that more. It returned. But it returned with joy. Sneak this in here. If you got everything America has to offer and you're not a Christian, don't you catch on that you accept your mission? And you get back to your when you realize, you know, you get more joy out of giving stuff away and selling stuff and accepting this person. You're, 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 are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Why don't you get back to putting Jesus first and watch what happened to your mindset? Turn again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy Did you hear that? They had learned the power of Jesus now. They learned that they'd been doing it. They'd been having some church. These were men who had already discovered that there was power in the name of Jesus to see, heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. They were right there. These were men who knew from experience. Subject. The invocation of Jesus' name. These are men that Jesus chose to establish the church and set the tone for the church dispensation. After his crucifixion, his death, resurrection, and before his ascension into heaven, Jesus commissioned them to evangelize the world. We got to be intentional. I think we've turned to more excuses. Evangelist. He instructed them to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, making disciples of all nations and baptizing them in his name. Romans, he's with them. What did he say to do? He gave them that one final important thing. Say what? What are you talking about, Willis? Huh? Go wait for what we've been. He didn't tell them to go immediately. He didn't tell them to start preaching, teaching right away. They were not to go do any of that. He told them, nope, I need you to go wait. He told them there was something more they needed. I know you've done a lot of good things. But you followed me this last three and a half years. I know. But let me tell you something. This is more than just a fan. More than just another club. This is going to be more than just a fan. The disciples, despite all their time walking with Jesus, despite the miracles that they'd already been a part of, despite the wonderful truth that they already received, were not qualified. I'm walking with the Lord. Good enough. We're not qualified. Nope, handing out bread and fish is not enough. Peter, walking on water ain't enough, buddy. Going the extra mile. Turning the other cheek will not be enough. Loving your enemies is not the finish line. All those are wonderful attributes. They weren't enough to reach the people with the gospel. Good deeds are not enough. They weren't ready. They were not equipped. They could not build 
this great church that Jesus spoke of. He was coming back for them. And so they were all baptized at the time. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter all the flowery words that you say. You are not ready until you have the Holy Ghost. They weren't ready. They weren't equipped. Listen, their names, their very names were engraved on the foundations of heaven. But they did not have what it takes to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had to go wait. They had to obey. They had to listen to what Jesus said. They couldn't go forward without being baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptism literally means immersion. To be baptized is to be totally immersed. When you get baptized here, we completely immerse you to be fully submerged, to be entirely submerged in the water. Baptism is the image of obedience and total and absolute submission to God. Oh, where am I going with this one? Some of you gotten a little wet with your ministry. Some of you got a little damp, but you're not submerged. There are other things cluttering your life and getting in the way. And uh, Jesus told his disciples, John baptized with water, but you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. There's no way to overstate the importance of what happened in that upper room. It was a culmination, it was a pinnacle, the ultimate plan to save and rescue humanity in the upper room where they were told to carry and wait. A spiritual transformation took place when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They completely released themselves to the presence of God. Give yourself away. I remember some of you had a hard time with that. Give yourself away so you can use. Well, you get upset at song, you can look at it and realize, well, you know why he's not using you? So useful to fight ourselves. I'm the best man. I'm the best leader. You release yourself into the presence of God. When they were filled with the Spirit of God, it changed them. They didn't leave the upper room the way they went in. Every part of them was completely and utterly submitted to the influence of the divine or fourth move of God. God took over. When you get baptized, every part of you gets wet. Every part of you gets affected. Why do you think that they stumbled about like they were drunk? A drunk stumbles because he's under the influence. The influence changed the way they walked. It changes the way they talk. They were under the influence of something else. These guys had something happen in Acts 2, 12 and 16. And they, remember the days? And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mock and say, oh, these men are full of new wine. Isn't it funny people mock other people that go all in with God? Ah, oh, you ain't got to do that. Well, according to your life, yeah. But Peter standing up with the 11. His failure. Standing up with them. When you make a mistake, yeah, don't. Just because you made it, don't spend the rest of your life trying to justify it. Get out of it. But Peter, standing with the eleven, they lifted up his voice and said, And you men of Judea, the other day, all that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known then to you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as about the third hour of the day. So here we have the two days, and, and Peter says, but this is that. The days get to meet the that. The days get to induce the days to the that, but this is that which is spoken by the... I, I submit, I declare that I don't care what day you are today, you need the that. I, you need a reunion. You need to schedule another meeting today. You need to get back to the that. Oh, God. This is what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. It means to yield yourself 
to come under the influence. And all of a sudden, hey, man, I ain't going there. We're not doing that. We're not listening to that. I'm like, well, what's happening? I'm under the influence of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to speak in tongues. That's the Holy Ghost taking over the most unruly member in my body. When you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, the presence of God. Uh, I don't have it like them. That's because you haven't yielded like them. It impacts everything, folks. It touches every. This song is saying about the Holy Ghost makes you love everybody. I'm the only one who knows how. Anybody, anybody right here? Make you love everybody. You remember that one? Well, like I said, I got some work to do. I love everybody. I just don't like everybody. But the Holy Ghost impacts you. It changes you. You can't hold anything back when you're completely immersed. When you get immersed into something, come on, some of you be honest about yourself and some of your hobbies and some of your things and your... Fetishes and oh, you 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 got thirty pairs of shoes, but you can have one more. You have a bowl of ice cream, but I can have one more. I can eat twenty jelly beans, but give me another bag. I can have one more. Come on now, so hello, are you hearing what I'm saying? We we we, we got this, and they, uh, our flesh can always say one more. So why is it that we're so busy, blessed, and we walk around spiritually and meaningful? We have access to those. We need to go back to the beginning, back to the upper room, and remember what it means. It means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. In other words, I want to yield control. I want God to speak to me in the morning. And I get up and I tell my beautiful, loving wife and daughter, listen, I, I can't, I got to go. God spoke to me. I got, I'm going to preach this on Sunday. The Lord spoke to me that there's a bunch of days that need to get back and meet the that today. It's not just Pentecost. It's about they meeting the that and getting the Holy Ghost and transforming your home, your life, your family, your eternity. Hallelujah. It's funny because we show up a lot of times Sunday morning in church. Got to get everything under control. And you sit here today and you're bound up. But we know where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is, I, I can tell you what happened to your liberty. It's locked down with all the distractions. It's locked down the fact. I know you got your toast spiritually, but the West is dry as toast. You don't want to say that. And it's offensive. I'll be you know. Well, get over yourself. What did James say? I'll show you my faith by my tongue. People are down, sitting in church, waiting. This is the place to be set free. This is a place for the move of God. Holy Ghost. This is a place for a move of God. This is a place to get the change. Why do we come to the church saying, I'm here, but don't ask me to come to the altar. I'm here, but don't ask me to worship. Wait a minute, did we forget what the church is for? Did we forget? And thank God for that we celebrate. How many celebrate your birthday? Hey, it's my birthday. What does that mean? You were born. Kind of helps to be alive, you know, to be born. Well, that we celebrate this to remind them, wait a minute, i got to get this thing about what it's about. It's time we yield control back to God. It's time we say, not my will be done, but thine. It's time to come and yield to the influence of the Spirit of God. Are you sick and tired of the same problems in the home? Are you sick and tired with the same thoughts and things going through your mind? Are you tired of the same battles? The problem is we have a control issue. I want a little Holy Ghost, but I don't want enough to do that. God, I want you to make me feel good. If you want to keep living like you did and acting like the world, dressing and talking and carrying on, you want that one-sided relationship with God. I'll see you next week, dude. 
kind of like that that side person on the side that just felt so normal. You only see them once a week. Because you're really in a, another relationship. See, when it comes to the Holy Ghost and power, we might as well trade in our baskets and tank for a waiting pool. I almost bought that little waiting pool and then we got for the Jesus. Put it right out here. But spiritually, that's what some of the living. You got baptized, fully immersed in Jesus' name, and you'll jump up and down and don't change the doctrine. And we won't. But if you were that adamant about that, you should be more adamant about how you live. Some of us are dancing around in the waiting pool while. And sadly, I, 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 I said this on start. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna excuse it. Every now and then, I may preach a good evangelist, evangelist, and service, but in all honesty, it's really not about what I do, it's about how you react to the whole. I should be able to get up there and say, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that'll send you to the moon. You know? But the problem is, is there's too many other things vying through the affections. Mm hmm. But God, I just want to listen to feel okay. I do just a little bit of yielding. In the service, got a few happy tears, a few hugs. Yeah, I'll be back next week. Nothing changes me. Let me tell you something. For all you want, you can't baptize anybody in the ankle deep water. And you really can't live for God. And I believe the Holy Ghost on this Pentecost is beckoning those of you that want a real walk. More than ever before, where the water is deep, where the power of the Holy Ghost is real, where the Spirit of God can put you under its influence. How many know what the Bible says in Ezekiel 47 about the levels of the water as it flows? Out of the house of God. In a vision, the angel of the Lord kept taking him further and further out into the flow of the water. He started out in what was ankle deep water. But that wasn't where the Lord wanted him. He waited out until he got into deeper, needy water, but that wasn't enough. And after about a while, he got into thigh deep, but the angel still beckoned him. And finally, he goes a little further where he saw a great river that he could not pass in. There was just waters to swim in. See, the further you go in God, the deeper it gets. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, somebody hear that this morning. I feel like I believe God is calling people here today, this church, to get out of the tide pools and get into the deep waters of the things of God. Anybody here tired of the kiddie pool? Anybody here tired of being like a child? Anybody tired of always being offended and hurt and walking around without joy and just tolerate? Get out of the way. It's just frustrating you. I get it, you know, a few little Christian quotes and, you know, a few doctrinal points. Put up a few little Christian posts on Facebook. But I'm praying and I'm hoping that we got a few folks here that want more of them. A few good sermons going to pop up. Anybody here want to solve and move about this? Did I come to the right place today? Am I in the right church today? When I, am I, are there people here that really love God today? I, I got plenty of you give me all sorts of advice. So I got some advice for you. Get out of that ankle deep and get into the. If you know there's another level there for me, how do you bypass the level for you? Is there anybody here that wants to get baptized and get back into the deep end with God and say, I want to get immersed in this thing. I want to yield to the Holy Ghost. Are you tired of fighting? Are you ready to surrender to God and wade out into the deeper places?
I read read something about the medieval times of the knights and being raised in England, all that kind of stuff. It, 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 it kind of it kind of resonates with me a little bit because I still have the castles and all that kind of stuff there and the armor and so and all, I got to see all that. But what they would do back in the medieval times when they baptized people, those soldiers knew that going to war, they would have to fight, kill, do some ungodly things. So when you baptized a knight or a soldier, they would take their sword arm and when you baptize them, they would keep it out of the water because what they were going to do with that hand. <laughs> Wait, uh, come on, that makes sense a little bit. We can count. Uh, I get it. Anybody, did anybody not get that? I, I mean, I get I get the, the final understanding on that, right? It's basically saying, you know, I pledge to be a Christian almost. <laughs> Everything but except my fighting hand. It's a way of want to be saved, but <laughs> I said for decades. I get it. Excuse me, I get it. I understand it. I'm like, I'm all in Jesus, but can I keep this? It's really a vain attempt to se segregate or to separate a part of my life out of God's influence. Hey, God, I'm giving you everything. Well, come on. I got this one thing. Do I have any real people here today? It doesn't work that way. That's not how it works with God either. He's God of everything or he's God of nothing. He will not share the throne of wisdom. In fact, in Matthew, in Mark 10, 21 to 10, Jesus, he holds him to love. And he said to him, one thing thou lackest. Now, if the Lord spoke to me and said, I got one, look, I'm doing part of Man, we're throwing a part. I'm buying the cake and ice cream. We are gonna, if God came and said, hey, you only got one thing wrong with you, brother. Brother Crow, you got one thing. Brother Jonathan, you got one thing. I mean, I'm going to be shouting. If, if God told me, Brother Dan Porter, I got one thing wrong. If God told me it was only one thing wrong with you, I'd shout. Man, can you imagine God coming up? Hey, man, you got a great wife. She's only got one thing wrong with her. I'd be like, come on, man. Hallelujah. I'd be calling the church. Let's have a party. It's on me. Everybody get to the church. Sister Crow's only got one issue. Can you imagine right now? Look at your spouse. They only got one thing wrong with them. Now you said they're going to be in the water right now. I could name 10 things. Come on. Now y'all were fighting on the way to church. You were thinking last night, get in this mess. We got any truthful folks here? Man, if you ain't fighting, you ain't loving. Do I need to go to the marriage episode here? What do I need to do here? Hello? Y'all doing all right? You got love child fixing to pop out here in a couple of days. Come on now. Can we make this happen? Can we be real? If he said, I only got one thing wrong, you better look out. My, my busted up knees and legs, I'm going to try to run around this place. Here he is. He tells, hey, one thing about life is. You know, he didn't walk away from Jesus' society. You know why? He's like that soldier. He likes some of us. What? Y'all don't know what about. Come on. Come on. Let's be you. Go thy well. Way. Sell whatsoever thou hast. Give to the poor. Now shalt have treasure in heaven. And come take up cross and follow me. The Bible says that he was sad at that saying. And went away grieved. You got one thing? Trade. Bet right now. Trade. You'd have it all get. If I could have G. Oh, my. 
Oh, did, did you see it? Did you hear that? Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. See, because if that was a today Jesus, you know what would happen, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Come on. The Jesus they talk about. The, now, I'm just kidding, man. Come on. You ain't got to do all that. Come on. I, I'm just joking around. You, re, you really don't have to. I don't have to be the Lord of your life. Your dad can do that for you. Your husband. I just, I just need a little. Bit. That's crazy, huh? Am I, I? But isn't that what we're told to? Isn't maybe? I need to see Jesus. Oh man, it's cool, man. You ain't got to do that. No, no, no. no I, I didn't mean all those things I said, really. But you don't hear Jesus do that. But that's how they make Jesus sound today. Oh, you ain't got to go to church. You ain't got to, you got a you got a doctor's note. Man, that works for school and work, but are you talking about heaven? Church? Are you out of your mind? Slap me upside the head if I get that one sideways. Please save a brother and get real. Wait a minute, what do you mean? He won't just be God of the things that you want him to be the Lord of. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord. Honestly, the problem is that we want to hang on our, our humanity and carnality. We want to maintain our selfishness and self-centeredness. I was born this way. Let's be honest. Our society and our world conditioned us to believe that God should conform to us. It's the spirit of the age. We don't need to point fingers at one another. We need to be honest that we're all surrounded by it. We're all inundated with it. Every time we turn around, we get this idiot thought or we get this crazy feeling or we get this and we find ourselves thinking. You ever find yourself thinking stuff in way? Well, what about, what? How did that get there? We're inundated. That's why we need to get immersed in the influence of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, except days, those days be shortened. He shall deceive the very elect. I need the church. I need the Holy Ghost. I need to get immersed in this thing. I need to get buried in this thing. I got too many things messing with me. The power of the church is not the music. It's not good programs. It comes from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the center of the church. John the Baptist knew what he was talking about when he said, I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist knew something. He's telling us something. He's imploring us, get immersed in this thing. Get on fire. You think we can serve God and things of this world at the same time? We're as ignorant as that medieval night who thought he could almost get that back. That's the problem. Let me reword it. We're, really easy. We're mostly baptized. We're mostly surrendered. We're mostly healed. Don't we do that? Don't we? Well, they got nine, right? Well, I said they'd be home by 10. They got home at 10. Ah, ah. You ever notice that it always goes against what's right instead of what's better. They're mostly devoted. Your husband's mostly faithful. Your wife's mostly faithful. You all right with that? Let me tell you, that makes us mostly baptized is completely useless to God. Mostly, sent, mostly surrendered is still rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mo mostly, mostly Christian is not Christian at all. If the disciples of Jesus Christ, those who walked with him and talked with him and operated in the absolute authority of his name, those who saw sicknesses healed and demons cast out, Wait a minute, you got to go wait? It was not by the 
by their power, but by the power of Jesus' name, if those folks needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those who did those things before they were qualified to reach their world, what makes you and I think that we can walk around half surrendered to God? You know, this is not a shouting message today. What makes us think today that we can be mostly committed to God and still expect to see the same power and demonstration that they If they needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost to empower them, if they needed the Holy Ghost to prepare them to reach the world, what makes us think that we can do without that? It's time for the church and all the days to get back to the back. It's time for the church. If you want church power, if you want your, 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 when your kids are sick to lay hands on them, if you want to get back to that place where you're walking on the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you've got to get submerged in this thing. If you want church power, you got to have Holy Ghost power. When your loved one is lost, if you want to get in prayer to make it, you got to be submerged in this thing. We can't have that kind of power as long as we're oh, see, waiting around at the shallow end of the pool because the power comes from the Holy Ghost. I need a daily power. Paul says something. He says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, he, just, he kind of throws it right in there and he says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than we all. I believe Paul would said, you know what? I probably needed to more than we all. I thank God that I, Paul said, you need to yield to the power of God every day. And I realize today I battle against all sorts of ideologies and all sorts of thoughts. And everybody has their own religion and everybody has their own ideas and everything. You know what? Scripture defines scripture, not you and I. I want to be submitted to his will. God is calling the church, his church, to a fresh anointing, a fresh experience, a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. A stand. We've heard it before. It's not exciting. You know, one of the laws of nature, of natural science, is that nature abhors or despises a vacuum. A vacuum is an unnatural state, and any vacuum will be instantly filled by whatever is available to fill it. I am a firm believer that the physical principles mirror spiritual realities. Many times Jesus used the natural to explain mm -hmm. and shed light on the supernatural. He said, the kingdom of God is like. I believe that when the church, you and I, if you say you and I, if you're a part of the church, say that's me, fail to realize it's God-given apostolic power. That fails to step up and assume the role of the spirit authority that God has given to yield to lesser spirits. Lesser things fill the void. Maybe, maybe I didn't say that before. You ever find that you, you wake up and you just waste two hours of that? The vacuum gets filled with things. Paul warned about this. He makes a statement in Ephesians 4 and verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. And that's the verse. Neither give. When you hide a light, if I had a light and I covered it up, you know what happens? Darkness immediately takes its place, takes over. You can't leave an ounce of room for the enemy to take up residency in your life. All that's extreme. Well, I don't want to be mostly lit. But remember.
remember that darkness is the lesser power than light. So the moment I take my hands off the light, darkness flees at light as light breaks forth. Have you noticed? And sadly, I believe that there are some spiritual powers and principalities and darkness that have taken advantage of the fact that we, the church, have not assumed and taken up the right position in the house of God, in, in, in the lives of our families, and in, in, in our spiritual walk. God, we've, we've kind of dismissed. And many times we fail to embrace the power that God has handed to us and we, we've left behind a vacuum that should have been filled with the works of the Holy Ghost and with the and the power of the apostolic church and instead we've become Americans and our lives are filled with so many things that when we stand before God we'll mean nothing but it was filled because we left a vacuum those powers and principalities have rushed in and weights and sins have rushed into that vacuum to construct strongholds in our homes in our families. Now, I don't know if anybody ever tried to work with a, an addict. Anybody ever tried to work with someone addicted to drugs on, on heroin or a life? May, may, you ever seen the kids get so caught up in a music artist that they dress like them, they act like them, they talk like them, and it's almost insane? They've immersed themselves. You ever try to get someone cured of that? You ever try to get someone out of that? But there's a stronghold built there. They're convinced. And it's affected how they dress, how they look, how they talk. It affects who they'll listen to. It is the only natural course. That when light is absent, darkness will always prevail. We have a saying, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Paul addressed this in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. It's lengthy. I, I, I'd be remiss not to read it. This I say, therefore, listen, listen intently. If you've got to close your eyes to listen to Paul, she's speaking directly to our, our spiritual condition. And I, I love getting excited. I love shouting and worshiping and dancing. And we do a lot of that around here. But right now, let, let, let the word do a work right now. Just listen. Uh, this I say therefore in testimony, Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, oh, I wish you would have all been here Wednesday, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Wherefore, listen, listen, listen. He breaks this down. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth. Hello? With this neighbor, for we are members. One of the, in other words, stop lying tell the truth. Not sometimes. <clears throat> Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, if you can't go to bed angry because then you let it raining. You have to turn around and say, forgive me, or I forgive you. Let me let that go. Why? Because he falls that would neither give place to the devil. What's he saying? Stop doing wrong. Not mostly. Stop. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him work. Stop stealing. Start working. Let no, listen, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Stop talking like that. Fill your mouth. Create. That's what it says. He always gives an answer to what to do. He doesn't just say, stop it. He gives you something to do every time. Listen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
He just wants you to stop. He implores you to stop and then do what's right. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed under the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking good put away with you with all malice. And he didn't just stop there, just did it. He gave you something to do and replace it. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God's for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Wait a minute, God, that's too hard. It is. It is. But that's why he's given us help. That's why he's given us a comforter. That's why he's given us the Holy Ghost. And it's time for us to rise up and say, you know what? I can't do all that without, you know, I'm a jerk of a husband without the Holy Ghost. I'm a jerk of a father without the Holy Ghost. I'll never reach my potential. Oh, I'll be a good me, but I'll never be a good Christian. It's time for the church to rise up in the power and authority that God has handed to us. It's time to expose darkness. Hello? Pull the bushel off the darkness and let the glorious light of God shine and make a difference. It's Can, can I say it this way? Is anybody ready to serve notice on, serve, serve notice on the devil? Yeah. On hell? My house is going to be a house of prayer. My house is going to be a house of God. My house, we're putting away on, uh, what are we, we're, we're going to take, the, we're going to uncover the light and let it change and transform. It's time we say, I want to surrender the power of God that he can dispel the darkness. It's rained here too long. It's messed with my heart, my marriage, my family, my church, my friends, my neighbor. It's time to come against false doctrine and bondage of human philosophies that have ruled too long. It's time for us as the church to get baptized in the Holy Ghost all over again. It's time to quit playing church and become the church. The world needs a Holy Ghost filled, powerful church. Not people that are like them all week and try to come in and be like Jesus for a day. Now, when I read my text, there was two days. Those that had got the Holy Ghost and those that didn't know what it was. And it doesn't really matter which day you are. The bottom line is that we all need the Holy Ghost. As I close, the Bible tells us in Luke 10, Behold, I give unto you power. You know how many times that word power is used? Let me be honest. How many feel powerless? If Paul can turn around and say that, which I want to do, I don't. That which I don't want to do, I do. We can be transparent enough and say, you know, I got some things. Hey, man, is there anybody here can be a better man? I want, I want, I want to do something. I, want, I know it's not Father's Day yet, but let's all the men come forward. If you're, if you're a man, come forward. Boys can stay where you at. But all the men. Godly men come forward. The home can no, go no higher than you spirit. Every one of you have been given power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And we know what those represent. But the power is the Holy Ghost, not you. You can make all the stands you want call, but without the Holy Ghost, ain't nothing in the stick. God isn't calling us to make a certain amount of money or wear a certain kind of clothes or fit into a certain kind of clique or club. I tell you what he has called us to be godly. Godly, Holy Ghost filled men that can turn the world upside down. 
men that make a difference. I'm not talking about having a few good colloquialisms you say, but truly led of the Holy Ghost. That way you can head off at the pass before your family careens down the... I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He's given that to us. How are, why are we running around doing interference all the time? And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you know what the Bible says? Don't even rejoice over that. You got that in spades. But that's really not what we jump up and down and shout about. Don't rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your focus, man, still on heaven or here? Maybe if we realigned our focus on what's important, our family will look up and start looking correct. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Maybe it needs to be us that are the they that get the that today. I need to get the that that was spoken up by the prophet Joel that he's going to pour out his, let him pour his spirit out on me as the head of my house. Let me be first. Let me be first. Let me be the most godly spiritual youth leader, not just having a title and showing up on a Friday night. Let me be an amazing dad that little girls look up to. I want a husband like that. I want to see men of God in our church like that. Do we have any men that can stand? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to listen. Y'all praying. Peter had failed. But who stood on the day of Pentecost? Some of you have felt that moment where you've in the spirit, you've kind of walked on some water a little bit. You knew God just kind of carried you. Anybody? Oh, there are some times, some amazing times in my life walking with God and almost felt like so felt like that, but reality hits and save me, Jesus. Was it a bad thing? It was a good thing because he learned. As long as I'm holding on to Jesus, I can walk on water where I can see. Peter failed then. He failed when he denied him. But when he realized that, you know, what, it's, it's not anything that I can do with what he does, he was able to stand up on the day of Pentecost because the Bible says, but Peter standing up with the eleven. I won't tell everyone you may forget yesterday. Yes, amen. Amen today. 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 Today I'm going to get the Holy Ghost like never before. Yes, amen. Today I'm going to lead the way for my family. I want to be Holy yes. Ghost. Led. My babies, my children, my wife needs me, Holy Ghost. My wife needs me to be God. My wife needs me to be Holy Ghost. Filled. She doesn't need me to be richer or stronger or taller or better looking or better car. See, my wife needs me to be led of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Anybody? Ladies, as you come and stand behind the men, I wonder if this church right now can do like Jesus commanded them. Terry, Terry, pray, wait, 